So I've been thinking a lot about um, disclosure and we've we've sort of debated on it a few times, haven't we, that disclosure can't happen, I, I think, because if, they, if the aliens or UFOs aren't actually talking to our government then and they don't really, they know as much as we do sort of thing, they can never release that it's true because they can't protect us. You know, the first question in the newspaper is going to be, can you protect us from them? And the government, they're going, ah, no, no. So they, think, they so they can't admit it. They can't they can't say anything about it. Um, but I was thinking about it that that maybe there might be a bit more to it, and it's linked into the dollar. You know, we're doing like a lot of Stephen Greer, and he says all these technologies are available, like mm-hmm. free energy and anti graph technology, but none of it is coming out into the the world. Commercial world, um, no. Yeah, um, you know that guy years ago who did that uh, car that runs on water. Um, which I think it was a hydrogen fuel cell. Everyone called said it was like um, a, a con or a hoax at the time. And now we look back at it going, it looks like a hydrogen, hydrogen fuel cell. Yeah. You know, and he just created the first one and then like they, he got squatted. But um, yes, he was uh, the one that know, died know. after meeting two, two men in black suits at a restaurant saying they've poisoned yeah. me. Was that, that's yeah, the exactly. Guy. Yeah. Um, but I, I always just wondered if the big car companies just went, thank you. <laughs> so I think we'll have that. And then, then we got hydrogen fuel cell cars not long after, or, you know, a decade after. But, so is there more of a financial and, um, and political reason why we can't have disclosure? And I'm thinking it's maybe because of the dollar, the US dollar, and the petrodollar in yeah, particular. They will, that's what I was going to say, yeah, it's, it's the petrodollar. Mm. It's, the, uh, yeah. it's the billion dollar oil industry that we're mm. currently all using to make certain men very rich buying yeah. energy from them when yeah well so i think it might actually be a bit more than that um i'll tell you the, the background the, so in 1913 1914 the us overtook britain as the world's largest economy right um but all of the sort of monetary systems were still very much um, the pound so the pound was still used by most banks to trade with Right. So, mm-hmm. so you need you need one standard currency sort of thing to, to trade a lot of the deals or you're just constantly exchanging rates and things and it doesn't really work. So the financial systems tend to use very large um, single currencies for lots of things. In 1914, we know the Federal Reserve Bank was created and we all know what happened the most, there. Just use the most stable currency, don't they? And I suppose the British yeah. Empire had made the pound the most stable currency. Probably. Exactly. And, that's probably and it was linked to the gold standard, so you could trade pounds for gold. Yes. We then had to get rid of the gold standard then, um, bec- after the First World War, because our economy was in the tank, basically. So we had to get rid of the gold standard so that we mm-hmm. could deflate the p- value of the pound, um, which we did. Um, but the Americans had been lending everybody money and, s- and selling them. So all of a sudden, the dollar was the big currency and everybody sw- and, and it was still linked to the gold standard so everybody switched to the dollar and yeah, then was world, war- world war ii wasn't it but i think well now then world war ii came along america really funded everybody and we were they were supplying us and we basically paid for this with gold so all of a sudden america was vastly the largest um, holder of gold in the world they had it by you know by the ton they still had the gold standard so everybody bought things in dollars. Really? Uh, well, it, it, it went from being quite a, um, a quiet solo country, uh, quite an isolationist country, to the superpower it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, that is when they really took over the world. Um, oh, yeah. But then we had this agreement in um, 1944, the Bretton Woods Agreement, where the big countries all got together and they decided basically that the dollar would become the world's reserve currency. So it became yeah. the world's main currency. Mm-hmm. Um, but then this petrodollar thing comes in a little bit later. Um, and I know this is all very complicated, but it does link together, I promise. So in 1971, we had a big um, petrol uh, prices shot up. OPEC, there was a low demand and petrol prices shot up. There was a bit of a run on the dollar. So Nixon separated the dollar from the gold standard yes. because everybody yeah. could trade gold for dollars and the people were doing it and just like just sucking the gold out of America. So they, they, they separated it. But what they also did was they got a deal with Saudi Arabia um, in, in the same year and they basically created this um, petrodollar. So what they said was instead of a gold standard, we'll uh, connect oil to the dollar. 
-hmm. So whenever you sell oil all over the world, it's sold in this petro dollar and it's yeah. linked to the dollar. So as that goes up, that goes down, that thing. Yeah. Uh, OPEC followed, Norway, yes, Russia, yeah. everybody does it. Heavily right? supports America's GDP. Oh, I think it's over 50% of their GDP comes from the, the, the petro dollar. Yeah. They're not being sold. In and the that's dollar. the point, isn't it? That that the fact that 60% of the world's um, actual bank reserves are recorded in dollars um, and that the and that the petro dollar is obviously linked so close to the dollar inflates the American um, economy mm -hmm. significantly. And I think that's the point. Yes. They then use the dollar as a weapon. So when countries sort of step out of line, like Russia have and China have a couple of times, Trump really has used it as a weapon in the last four years. America can sort of control elements of where the dollar goes. So what the Americans can do is they can put sanctions and embargoes on a country and basically say, you're not allowed to trade with the dollar. They did it to a Russian steel company a couple of years ago and the company went under. Even though it doesn't operate in America, America saying that you can't use the dollar destroyed them mm -hmm. literally overnight. And they did it with China. So yes, China every so often will go, maybe we shouldn't use the America's reserve dollar. Uh, you know, as the world's reserve, maybe we should use another, but there isn't another another currency that could possibly be used. The euro is the closest, is the second biggest used, apparently. Yeah, well, how, how do you think historically that they've managed to keep the one billion Westerners, some of the richest people on the planet? Well, the dollar helps. Mm. There are certain mechanisms um, in place that bring the money in to the Western world. Yeah. that have existed for a long time. Unfortunately, in today's world, a lot of these countries have now got wise to this. Mm. And uh, the tides are, are turning, basically. Um, it's, the money's moving, the, the distribution's moving towards Asia from, 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 from the Western world. And Western yeah, civilizations are primarily in decline. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that happens throughout history, doesn't it? The, the rise, empires rise and fall. And at the moment, yeah, definitely Asia's on the off. But um, just to focus on this then, so today, 67, 61% of the world's cash reserves are in dollars. And like I said, they use that as a, as a weapon, but they use it to influence foreign policy. So they're constantly using it to sort of get countries under heel. This really is evidence that America took over the world after World War Two. And even the most dominant nations on Earth, like China and Russia, are still. And then every so often a country will like Iraq did a few years ago. They'll say, well, we might start selling the oil in, um, in euros. A couple of years later, we invade Iraq. Yeah. So no one else is doing that now. Uh, the same thing happened with uh, Gaddafi in uh, Libya. Yeah. He threatened to stop using the gold, uh, the, yeah, the dollar standard for, for oil and wanted to create a, a gold standard for the African nations. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly he's a <clears throat> axis of evil, even yeah, though exactly, America yeah. have supported him in the past. It's pretty yeah. much the same story. It's, it's puppets that, that, you know, aren't doing as they're told anymore. Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. Gaddafi, um, it's all linked to oil. Yeah, definitely. But then, I think it, this, but the problem is, I think this system has now become so embedded um, that the dollar is so necessary, but also so necessary for the American government. The American economy is still the largest in the world. Would it be if the dollar went into decline? Well, this is the, this is the thing. So America can either accept that if they don't intervene, that their economy will collapse. Mm. Yeah, if they do let people start trading oil in, yeah. in something other than the dollar or if new technologies came out that removed the need for oil anymore suddenly then america would be suddenly, second third fourth well, no, no, it, i think it's a economy nation. just completely collapsing on itself because yeah. of the sheer amount of debt they're in i don't think they'll be well, able to get out that's of that another, debt that's another thing their debt um is obviously enormous just 22 trillion or something with a with a t mm -hmm. um you know um, and he's just announced a trillion of, dollar bailout package, hasn't he, as well? Yeah, 1.6, wasn't it? Um, but they control a lot of the debt. Even though China buys debt or Japan does or whatever, they buy, they tend to buy it in dollars. So America can, if it wants to, um, like, see, devalue the dollar. So what they can do, they do quantitative easing. They pump more money into the system, mm. devaluing value but it also devalues their debt so they can have all this debt and they've got it by the short and curlies they control it so china can never say well we demand the money back because contr america controls 
the 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 value of the of the actual debt. Yeah, I'm sure the, the China I mean? Communist Party have realised what America's been up to, though, and they've got into this game with a plan. Yeah, I'm I don't. Sure I don't they think they're very naive. America, yeah. I'm pretty sure most of the governments in the world probably are fully aware of of, of what we're discussing and have been for a number of years now. Um, but they're still playing along. That's my point. So why are they yeah, still playing along? Because if to get out of it would probably cause the economic collapse of the country that you're in, and no politician wants to have the economy collapse under their watch. Exactly. Not, well, that's the point, though, isn't it? They can down the road for five years, and it's someone else's problem. Yeah. But the dollar is so ingrained in the worldwide economic system that we can't untangle it. The problem with that is we then are continuing to allow America to dominate us financially and economically. Yeah. Um, and then when you combine that with the fact that they've interfered or invaded and occupied or interfered in foreign politics or invaded and occupied over 50 countries since World War Two to the present day, mm -hmm. um, which is what, 25 percent of the world's countries? Yeah, it's pretty exactly. much bullying the world into to what it wants to do. And, yeah. you know, in, in that period since World War Two, have they invaded and occupied um, any country with any Caucasian people? Well, if they invaded any country that hasn't, isn't full of oil as well. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, but, um, but, yeah. But yeah, Afghanistan, but that was all about heroin. So, well, that's a big question I've got there as well. That in, the, So we know oil is a finite resource and America mm -hmm. knows oil is a finite resource. But a, a large chunk of America's economy is reliant on oil, not just the fact that it's bought and sold in oil. Every time we buy and sell oil, even in this country, it's bought with the petrodollar so it is influencing and exaggerating the american economy so the entire world feeds america's economy is the point but that is a finite resource so yes they probably have been trying to prevent these new technologies from coming through as much as possible china is spending a lot of money and resources to try to grab hold of all the battery sort of um, resources so all the precious metals and things that they need to we could yeah. use to build back but china's desperately trying to control it yeah buying up um, a lot of mines isn't it in various places around the world yeah yeah well they're building a lot of roads in africa just saying we'll build this road for you isn't it a <laughs> lovely road but we want the mining rights to your country for the next 50 years and they're like oh, okay america must know this they must know that it's a uh, a finite resource and they must know that this game isn't going to last forever no it will come to an end eventually yeah so does that explain why they're building the largest military force that humanity's ever seen probably to some extent because yeah they, 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 yeah maybe they've foreseen what what's coming when they do have to finally admit i suppose the technologies that we know exist that can circumvent mm. the need for, for fossil fuels for for energy i mean if you think about it though we still need we still need oil for a lot of things. Most plastics are made from oil. Yeah. So you're still going to need a lot of plastic products. So I think the oil industry will still need to exist. It will just shift into more of that than uh, obviously. Yeah, I think production. it'll be much, much smaller though as well. Won't it? I mean, the, the, the stuff we use to make plastics is nothing compared to what we stick in our cars no. and our ships and our whatever else. So it'd be five, ten percent of what it currently is. Um, yeah. You know, which means that, again, America's influence on the world would decrease in a similar way. Um, what similar what you probably find is, is the four guys that own the four big oil companies are probably well, well aware of this. They, they know this and that's why they keep buying up all the, the technologies that would surpass the need for fossil fuels in order to keep their billion dollar money making mechanism and suppress continuing. It. Mm -hmm. And suppress it or make it as difficult and as expensive as possible. But yeah. how do we then link that to disclosure though so i mean I, I i can't help but think the dollar is so important not just financially it's not just the cha-ching it's the power and i also think that people with enough with when they start talking about billions they don't really care about money anymore as is it most much as they care about power you know yeah i'd agree and i would say that's just as important to the american as it's the influence around the world the dollar and the petrol dollar lets them have mm -hmm. that's what they don't want to let go of yeah and I do think it's 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 maybe one important reason why these technologies, and we've talked about secret space program as well. And one mm -hmm. of the reasons why I keep saying, why are we hiding the fact if we've got anti graph technology and we've got a secret space program, why are we hiding it? Because you're a peasant and the peasants have always been kept in the dark through history. 
but also another reason <laughs> is, and obviously yes, look at the Vatican. But uh, another reason is they don't want if if we know that technology exists, we'll demand it. Yes. But they don't want us to. They want us to have the dollar. America wants us to keep using petrodollars, and that means keep using oil. Then we will keep using it until it's gone. Well, they've um, got quite a good control mechanism in place, haven't they, with the dollar and the petrodollar and, and yeah, the current system that exists. If you suddenly circumvent that with free energy, that people can just have devices in their own homes, we've got no need for electricity bills anymore. That's a yeah. you know you, you know any power bills that that's gone. No need to, to buy fuel for, for your car. That, that's gone. So a lot of the ways that they extract money from you on a regular basis. And like you said, we, we have control us on a regular basis because then all of a sudden, would you, you know, there's fuel these duty. debt systems having debt. You know, they want fuel. us to have debt because it's a control system. Fuel duty. I figured out we get taxed six different times on fuel. Yep. Um, uh, if you consider like import tax, export tax, VAT, fuel duty, you know, we yep. get taxed about six different times. Um, again, it's a fuel bit thick, but you've got to so wonder the if the this... government funding breaks down, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, it's the system, though, isn't it? It's, it's the system that we use. You've got to wonder sometimes whether we've got trapped into a system that now the governments would love to get out of and they just can't figure out how. Yeah, yeah, I you think need... that's right. The only way to do it is to have a massive reset and how much pain will that cause you know how many how many people will die how many people will how many riots will there be and yeah but we exactly need to do to have this reset don't we but then exactly. that's just one more reason why they can't admit what they know about aliens because it's this it's that domino effect isn't it if they, if they admit one thing they have to admit the next thing which then leads on to the next thing which then means the whole system just collapses yeah and nobody wants that to happen on on their watch yeah, it's all about. I, the I, I even know that I even think that most of the politicians, probably when they become like prime minister or you know become president, they, they become aware of all of this. There's just nothing they can do to change it within their short period in power. So yeah. they just turn a blind eye. Again, it's that political system. Thing. Nobody wants to think long term, do they? I've never quite understood why they put in so much money and uh, even because of the amount of debt they've got into mm -hmm. their military. And that just scared me a little bit in that they've been building bases all over the world. They rent that island in the Indian Ocean off us because um, they were worried that their bombers couldn't reach certain parts of India and, and Asia. Um, Diego Garcia, is that Diego the one? Diego Garcia. And that was, their, that was their public reason. Well, our bombers can't reach these parts, so we want a base there. I'm like, why do you need to reach everywhere? Do you know what I mean? It's like they, they seem to have a plan. And I think that should scare the crap out of us. They spend yep. more on money on, on they spend more on the military than the next five countries combined. And remembering that one of those countries is China and the other one's Russia, that should terrify people. Yes. Why are they spending this much money unless they've got a long term plan? Yeah, no, totally agree. Why? There's yeah, there, there's a lot more planning than than the public are let yeah, are let let to know goes on, uh, I imagine. Mm. And then when you consider that again, we relate that to disclosure and maybe Project Bluebeam, because they want us the next big threat to be the, an alien threat. And then will America stand up and go, well, we need to be the world police. We need to stand up and we need to make sure we look after everybody and we protect the world. And why I suppose they don't want disclosure yet is because they do have this long term plan. And part of that plan is that they want to use some of this technology against us. Yeah. It's all an intricate web, isn't it? In fact, I, I do believe there's a, um, a, a clip, isn't there, with that Dr. Carol Rosen, who used to work with Werner von Braun, mm -hmm. where she's warning about that being the, the next threat. There is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system. The first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over. And the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Yeah, exactly. In We've done, to, yeah. In order to continue their, their militarization conquest. Yeah, we defeated communism, kind of, China. 
Um, you know, China's not really a communist state anymore. I don't know why they still call themselves communists. They, they're, they're pretty capitalistic in, their, in the way they operate nowadays. Well, yeah, They've kept all the bits of communism they like, like all the um, dominating your people. And, um, but they took the bits of capitalism they like, like making billions of dollars. I think they realised they had to play, they had to play America's game, I and mean, they, they yeah. had to adopt that, the, the capitalist principles in order to, to do that a little bit. So it all comes down to the dollar, damn it. I think that's it. It's just, it's just a part of the disclosure thing that I've never really considered. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I considered it before, but perhaps not, not, not thought about the link re recently. But, but yeah, I think that's the, the reason. It's all linked. It's, it's the technology yeah. that perhaps exists. They, they, they've, they've gone on with a lot. If you think about it, if, if, if Roswell was one of the, the first crashes, or you know, maybe even predating that a little bit, they've managed to convince the world for, I don't know, half a century that mm. you know you're a nutter if you you know if you've seen this and you report it. However, the tides are, are now turning with camera yeah. phones and what people can record today. Yeah, yeah, the tide is turning most definitely, and um, and the only way we maybe get to disclosure is after this fast reset. I, th I think in America reset. it's it's gone over the fifty percent, hasn't it? More than fifty percent of the population, when polled, believe that yeah. they're being lied to by the government about UFOs. Yeah. Well, once that starts going towards above fifty and towards towards hundred, you're no longer a nutter. No, I would say more people believe in aliens than believe in God. Yeah, I I think that probably in today's world, yeah. Good morning, my name is Carol Rosen. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the US, the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February and we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists, then there would be third world countries, now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids, and then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. This is a system, he told me, that would never protect anyone. Even back then, he talked about suitcase bombs. He talked about chemical, viral, bacterial, bi biological warfare that these space-based weapons would never protect us against. And then he told me that, in fact, if you travel around the world, which I did after he died in 1977, I met with people in over 100 countries who were friends. They didn't want to build space-based weapons. I became a space and missile defense consultant. And I worked with people around the world. I became a, an advisor to the People's Republic of China. They don't want to build a space-based weapon system. And he told me back then that they didn't. He said, go to Russia. They're considered to be the enemy. I got on a plane by myself. When I got to Russia, I had a list of people that I had read out of the newspaper. Chernenko was in office then. He was the only one I didn't get a chance to meet. They introduced me to everyone when I got there. And when I got back, I said, oh my lord, this man is telling the truth. There are, is no threat. And I've been waiting until this day for 27 years. And I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me that in the, as a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, 
He said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons, and now we should expect the spin, because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon, then we have to consider that they do have these weapons. So now they do have these weapons, so now we have to build these weapon systems, and that's the formula, except that it's all based on a lie. And we have witnesses here today that have shown you that these extraterrestrial beings, that these craft that have come here are now not UFOs, they're identified flying objects. And we know that they have beings in them. And we have witnesses here who have told you that they can shut down our missile silos. They can stop a rocket going into space that's a test. We have witnesses here who have worked in the classified departments who have the courage to come forward here to support what Werner von Braun told me back in 1974 to 77. And I will testify before the Congress that when I founded the Institute for Security and Cooperation in Outer Space, which I shut down a few years ago because I didn't believe we had a chance with this huge integrated around the world complex weapon system that we had any chance at all of transforming that war industry into a space industry that could provide benefits like Dr. Greer has said of global warming, we can end that situation of that problem, we can end the energy crisis, we can put, build now non-polluting technologies. Werner von Braun used to tell me that we could have cars back then that w drove around off the ground. He described this to me on beams so that we have no pollution on this planet. And we can solve the problems of the people that are urgent and potential and the other animals and the other cultures on Earth and in space. And we can end the arms race without dislocating the industry jobs, without disrupting the economy by transforming, Werner von Braun told me, the war industry into a global cooperative space industry that will provide, he said, finally, more jobs and profits on this planet than during any hot or cold wartime, more products and services that can be applied directly to solving the problems of this planet, and we can have a whole planet now that lives on pe in peace on Earth with all the cultures on Earth and with all the extraterrestrial cultures in space. And these are words that Werner von Braun told me in 1974. And I will testify before the Congress under oath about everything I have said and more. Thank you.